everyone. Today, we will be talking about paragraph development by narration and description. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's start with defining the important terms in this lesson. Let's talk about paragraph. Paragraph is a collection of sentences which all relate to one main topic. A well-developed paragraph should make the reader to identify which is the topic or the subject and the main idea. The topic or the subject is a part of a sentence that contains the person or thing performing the action or verb in a sentence. And the main idea is a complete sentence which includes the topic and the author wants to say about it. If the author states the main idea in his paragraph, it is called a topic sentence. Let's pause, think, and write. Think about this question. In writing a paragraph, why do you think it is necessary for a writer to have an aim in writing? Let's answer the question. Having an aim in writing is a good start in developing a paragraph. It also helps you to focus on your topic, and in addition, it helps you to be reminded on your mode of writing. Always remember, an effective paragraph has four main characteristics, unity, order, coherence, and completeness. Let's talk about unity first. Unity refers to the related ideas being contained within a given paragraph. It begins with a topic sentence, followed by supporting details, and ends with a conclusion. To achieve unity in a paragraph, a writer should focus on their idea and exclude irrelevant idea. The next one is order. Order refers to how you organize your supporting sentences. It can be in chronological order, order of importance, or any other presentation detail. When we say chronological order, it refers to arrangement or listing of ideas related to time. While order of importance, writers arrange the ideas according to hierarchy of value. It can be structured from most important to least important, or least important to most important. The third characteristic of a paragraph is called coherence. Coherence is somewhat close to unity, but this characteristic of paragraph refers to how sentences are interrelated. It means that every sentence should lead to the next one. It usually uses transition words to show order and logic. The last one is completeness. Completeness means the paragraph is well developed. It means that the main idea is clearly and sufficiently supported with related ideas. Remember that a well developed paragraph has a topic, body, and conclusion. It usually starts with the writing of topic sentence, then write events or supporting details in chronological order, and finally write your conclusion. This pattern of writing a paragraph is a good way to ensure that you stay focused on the topic and all details are in correct order. However, a paragraph's topic sentence must be general enough to express paragraphs over all subject, but it should be specific enough that the reader can understand the paragraph's main subject and point. Let's talk about now paragraph development. What is paragraph development? Paragraph development refers to logical arrangement of ideas or the mode of writing. The mode of writing helps you to follow and understand ideas better, and also being able to recognize the mode in the paragraph helps you to distinguish the major details to minor ones and also predict ideas. Paragraph development is the mode or manner of writing you follow consistently in elaborating your ideas. This will help you to make a clear stand with your topic. For example, if you are telling a story that is narrative, if 
you want to persuade or convince your reader with your idea that is persuasive. There are different modes of writing. They are narration, description, exposition, and persuasion. These are the mode of writing you can use in developing your paragraph. Remember that the paragraphs are building blocks of your paper. If it's not well written that flows logically and according to its mode and idea, your paper will not be viewed as credible as well as you will receive a poor grade. Let's pause for a while and think about this question. Based on your understanding, what do you mean by paragraph development? Let us start with the first paragraph development. The paragraph development by narration. Think about this. What is the most exciting and unusual experience you've ever had? How does this experience make your heart flutter? How about today? What was the last remarkable event that happened to you? Maybe you had a delicious and some soup breakfast before going to school which may have contributed much as to why you performed well in class. Wouldn't you want to share these stories if someone would ask you how your day went? When you want to tell these stories to your classmates, it is called narration. Whether your story is real or fictional, or you use your memory and imagination to not just tell a story, but also to interpret them. In narration, you recount a specific event in details, including vivid description of details, consistent point of view and verb tense, and a well-defined point. Let us talk about narrative paragraph. Narrative paragraph refers to a story by recounting personal experience or knowledge gained from reading and observation. According to Bedford Freeman, Narrative paragraph is usually governs chronology, which includes concrete detail, point of view, and sometimes such elements as dialogue. Let's take a look on the example of a narrative paragraph. One evening, when I was wading in the shallows of the lake to pass a rocky outcrop, I suddenly stopped dead as I saw a sinuous black body of a snake in the water. It was all six feet long, and from the slight hood in the dark stripe at the back of the neck, I knew it to be the Strom's water cobra, a deadly reptile for the bite of which there was, at the time, no serum. As I stared at it, an incoming wave gently deposited part of its body on one of my feet. I remained motionless, not even breathing, until the wave rolled back into the lake drawing the snake with it, then I leapt out the water as fast as I could, my heart hammering. An effective narrative paragraph makes the reader think and compel him or her to read the narrative again. To achieve effectiveness, there are four characteristics of narrative. First, a vivid description of details. Second, a consistent point of view. Third, consistent verb tense. Lastly, a well-defined point or significance. Let us talk about now what makes a well-written narrative paragraph. The first characteristic of a well-written paragraph, it has a vivid description of details. A writer of a narrative text and use a vivid description of details. It should be appealing to the five senses of human body, the sense of sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. A reader should also feel how it is like in the world of your story. Let's take a look with the example we had. You will see the description in the underline like Rocky Outcrop, Stop Dead, The Sinuous Black Body of a Snake, Six feet long, and from the slight hood and the dark stripe at the back of the neck, cobra, a deadly reptile, incoming wave gently deposited part of its body, and motionless and not even breathing. It gives you a vivid picture of how does this dangerous animal look like and how does it feel when it's around. Let's have this example. 
What do you think the dancers are doing in this exit? Most writers follow the rule of thumb, that is, to show, than to tell. Let's take a look at this line. Holding two bamboo poles by their ends, flat on the floor, clapping them together, then apart. The writer did not mention that they are going to clean, but based on the details and some fact knowledge of Philippine dances, and also as a knowledgeable reader, you would identify that the performance is indeed clean. The next characteristic is consistent point of view, or POV. As a writer, you can choose a way on how to tell your story. Point of view refers to who is telling or narrating a story. A story can be told in three different ways. First person, second person, and third person. Writers use point of view to express the personal emotions of either themselves or their characters. The POV of a story is how the writer wants to convey the experience to the reader. Generally speaking, third-person POV is used to convey the narrator as an omniscient and dispassionate observer. The narrator is all-knowing. This characteristic allows the reader to see not only the dialogue between the characters, but also the character's innermost thoughts and desire. Let's talk about the first-person point of view. The character is the one who is telling the story. It is commonly used in narratives and autobiographies, where the writer uses pronouns like I, we, me, or us. Either the pronouns are singular or plural, it both shows the perspective of the writer. Let's take a look on this example, an excerpt from The Great Gatsby of F. Scott Fitzgerald. You will see that the writer makes the character as the narrator of its own story. You will notice the use of pronouns like I and my, which indicate that it is based on the character's point of view. The next type of point of view is second person POV, where the writer has a narrator speaking to the reader. This type of point of view is usually being used in speeches, business and technical writing, and this POV uses pronouns like you and your. Let's take a look on the excerpt from Bright Lights Big City. The writer uses pronoun you to speak to the reader of the story. Let's talk about the third person point of view. The third person point of view has an external narrator who is telling the story, which is evident with the usage of pronouns like he, she, or they. This POV has two kinds omniscient and limited. In the omniscient third person point of view, the narrator makes the reader know everything what the characters are doing in the story. It means that the reader knows every side and corner of the story since the narrator states everything. While in the limited third person point of view, the narrator makes the reader know everything what a specific character has been doing. Let's take a look on this example. An excerpt from Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Let's talk about now the consistent verb tense. Consistent verb tense means keeping the same tense throughout a clause. A time period in a clause should be described with the same tense. If you have two or more time periods, start a new clause or a new sentence. To make it to the reader if the narrative had already happened, has been happening, happens on regular basis, is currently happening, will do so indefinitely, will happen sometime in the future. The next one is a well-defined point or significance. A well-defined point or significance is something similar with literary element theme. So the theme is unifying thoughts or idea in the text, and this is usually universal truth reflected on the text. Let's take a look on this example. What do you think the paragraph tries to imply, or what is the message in the text? As you notice, the passage tries to imply how enthusiastic the dancers were. The passage is lifted from the day the dancer came by a Filipino writer, Bienvenido Santos. 
the story is about two men who migrated in Chicago and were excited to meet their fellow folks who arrived in the state. They may not know those Filipino, but the fact that they came from the same country, Phil was excited to meet them and tour them around Chicago. It reflects how Filipinos love their motherland and always value their origin and ancestry. Remember, in writing a narrative paragraph, you must show characters, setting, conflict, and resolution. This element will help to make a vivid scenario of the story. In addition, specific details help the story to be vivid and the language used should be clear in the reader. Let's pause and think about this question. Why do you think time elaboration is necessary in writing a narrative paragraph? Five, four, three, two, one. Let us now proceed with the next topic, the paragraph development by description. Think about this. Have you ever been outside and feel poetic? Or maybe you wanted to write how you feel or how you perceive the view outside. When someone asks you to tell them how you feel or what your senses perceive, you need to choose words that describe it, right? Paragraph development by description provides details about something through the use of vivid descriptions. How does it look like, smell, taste, or feel? In writing your descriptive paragraph, you must organize it spatially through order in appearance or by topic. Let's have this example. In the paragraph, the subject piranha is described as an omnivorous freshwater fish with sharp teeth that come together in a scissor-like bite and with small body about 6 inches to 2 feet long. Descriptive paragraph should be written through the use of human senses like sense of sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. At the same time, it uses adjectives to create vivid picture or image of the story. It also uses descriptive prose to provide the physical picture of the subject, including its shape, material, position, and function. Let us talk about now the characteristic of a descriptive paragraph. The first characteristic of a descriptive paragraph is creating a dominant impression. In creating a dominant impression, you have to create a mood or atmosphere in writing your descriptive paragraph. This mood should be conveyed throughout the paragraph through effective description. Let's take a look on this example. What do you think is the mood in this paragraph? Can you feel it? The writer tries to imply a feeling of safety, comfort, and happiness. He doesn't tell in the paragraph that he feels safe, comfortable, and happy, but rather he shows it through describing the ambience of the place and the emotion felt by the character. The second characteristic of a descriptive paragraph is called sensory detail. Sensory description uses the five senses of humans to depict the image or scenery in the paragraph. Let's take a look on the example without sensory details. And now, let's take a look with example with the sensory details. What can you say about the difference between the two? Based on the examples, you will see that without sensory details, it is plain and boring. You can't imagine what is happening in the paragraph. While in the second example, it vividly shows how the two sisters enjoy their summer vacation and at the same time, the warm and relaxing feeling walking in the shore. Let's pause for a while and think about these questions. How do sensory descriptions help in writing a paragraph?
The next characteristic of descriptive paragraphs is use of vivid language. Instead of using general and vague words, use concrete and sensory packed language. Take a look on the comparison between vague and vivid sentences. On the vague side, the example is, the food was unappetizing. In the vivid side, the example is, pale turkey slices floated limpy in a pool of murky fat. On the examples, on the vivid side, it is clearly stated why the food is unappetizing. Another example, on the vague side, the example is, the traffic was heavy. On the vivid side, the example is, Our old car path as the main street became clogged with a line of clamoring motorists. The next characteristic is, a descriptive paragraph should be in varied structure. Avoid using the same subject verb pattern. To avoid same pattern, use embedded descriptive elements and combined sentences. Let's have this example. The hall was empty. She ran towards the classroom. She entered right after the bell rang. And the second one, racing down an empty hall, she skated into the classroom breathless just as the bell clung above her. Embedding descriptive detail in varying this sentence structure breaks the monotonous tone and clips the subject verb style to avoid when using the sensory detail. Do not use too many adjectives, too many adverbs, or cliché figures of speech. In developing a paragraph, usually one or two modes are used together, like narrative and descriptive. It is natural to combine two modes of writing. Like in writing a narrative paragraph, it requires to have a vivid description of details in order for the reader to imagine what it is like to be in the world of the story. Happy learning at home with lessons made easy by Olivarian Gothich. One proud Olivarian.